Rachel, how's he doing? Well, we're attacking cardiac at 135. We're hypotensive at about 70 over 40. I'm starting the first unit of blood and getting pressure in the meantime. Right. Okay, I need to get in his belly, open him up. Milena, I really need your full attention now. Okay, okay. Come on great. Uh, Michelle, I'm going to need loads of packs. I think he's got a belly full of blood. Nine, great. Two packs. Okay. They're coming. All right, let's, let's open this guy up. Okay. Um, incision. Okay. Uh, packs. Give me packs. Yeah. Get more packs, Michelle. Okay. I think I'm getting control. How's he doing, Rachel? Starting to improve. Okay. I think I'm. Heart rate's coming down to 125. All right. Pressure's starting to come up. Great. Okay. Guys, I think he's gonna make it. Okay. We just need to keep the pressure on right now. I want, I want you to catch up with the blood loss, Rachel. Yeah. Okay. Sandy, can you check if the next pack of blood is ready for the transfusion protocol and the blood is continuing to go in on the level one? The simulation center, in its simplest way, is a real hospital without real patients. Everything else is real. Whether it's the, uh, the equipment that we're using, whether it's the space that we're using, whether it's the learners from medical students, nursing students, residents, faculty, everything else is real. What happened? I got hit by a car. Okay. In terms of the way that we run simulations here, you can broadly think about it in three groups. One is procedural skill simulations. Five milligrams of morphine given. I'm just gonna take a quick look. second part is patient-provider communication skills. John Hyman, I'm in Raj, okay? I'm one of the doctors here. I'm here to look after you. I'm just going to put some cold jelly. The third aspect is what we call team-based training. The best example is probably the operating room where we have an uh, anesthesiologist, we have a surgeon, we have nurses, um, and we work together in a team. Right now he has two 16 gauge, yeah. one in each antecubital. He has ring elastics running. We acquire the basic approach to communication with patients, to communication in the operating room, especially in crisis situations, and to lay the foundations for approach to clinical judgment, decision making, and patient management. John, you're going to go to sleep now. I'm going to start giving you some medications to go to sleep. Fentanyl's going in. The Sim Center is an excellent environment, especially to be able to apply what we learn in theory. Uh, into a simulation environment so that we can then bring what we learned uh, to the real world. It's a bit like flying a plane. You hope that pilot would fly it well in the simulation. It's a really state-of-the-art uh, facility and that could provide the form uh, necessary for us to uh, train and to develop our surgical skills and to reach the competency that we need so that we can become safe. Let's put back the collar. Elena, you can let go of the stabilization. And Dr. Agarwal, we're going to be ready to start. Great. Let's get on. Let's uh, open this guy up. Let's stop the bleeding. By doing post-mortem of, uh, of the simulation, then you can debrief and to go rapidly into that sequence of the event in order to correct or to improve the product at the end. Guys, I think he's going to make it. Okay. Let's, let's go now and uh, debrief. I think we did a great job, but let's go and talk about it. Okay. What we're doing is we're building a simulation ward. So we can actually have a ward with a nurse's station. We can run simulations for how a ward should run, how um, uh, residents and medical students should be doing ward rounds. Another thing that we're doing is building a simulated apartment. We can train our healthcare providers to actually understand how to manage uh, patients in their own home rather than bringing them straight back to the hospital. It, it is very, very important that uh, we use the best and most advanced techniques uh, to produce the next generation of learners because uh, medicine and uh, medical science change so rapidly that anyone who graduates is going to find themselves as a lifelong learner. And uh, this, some of the skills that one learns in the simulation center will stand students in good stead as they go forward over their careers. The Steinberg Center for Simulation and Interactive Learning is to be a venue for inspiration, evolution and engagement for simulation in all its forms in order to deliver better education for our clinicians, better care for our patients and better health for our community.